This session is just about the curriculum. And so we're so excited. We have Dr. Stacey Anderson. So she is the Dean of Lincoln Memorial uh, University of uh, the College of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, she's a part of the founding faculty at LMU. So she's the bomb, I would like to say. And we are really excited that she is here. Um, and so I'm really also excited. She went to Iowa State University, so I'm an Iowan. So I'm like, woohoo, go Cyclones. Um, so we're so happy she is here. I'm going to again hide myself. We're going to let Bree take this over. Keep throwing your questions in, guys. After this, we're going to do another little table chat. And then we are going to go back um, and have our Q&A session. So here we go. All right. Thank you, Dr. Stacy. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I think it's important because I do see it still popping up in the questions. Just to reiterate one more time what the official degree is called. And um, then we'll get into kind of the meat and bones of the of the of the degree. Sure. Yeah, it will be a master uh, of veterinary clinical care. So the acronym or credentials would be an MV as in victory CC. Excellent. Okay. And who is eligible to apply for this program? Before we get into the curriculum, what are the prerequisites before we even get started? Yeah. So um, some of this is still under consideration by our creditor, um, SEX, uh, the Southeast or Southeast Association of Colleges. Um, but what we've submitted to them is that there's multiple pathways for entry. Um, there's a traditional entry from a bachelor's and um, all, all applicants would need to have six credits of 100 plus level biology, six credits of 100 plus level chemistry, and uh, three credits of 100 level English. Uh, we are also requiring that uh, the GPA for those prerequisite courses is a 2.8 or higher, um, and that they're completed within seven years of application unless someone's a, um, obtained an advanced degree. So with that, um, we have a way that um, a, a credentialed veterinary uh, technician or veterinary nurse could, who graduated from an AVMA CVTA um, program could enter the program um, from an associate's degree. Um, and so with that, there's a rubric that we've developed that takes into account um, years in practice, if they have a specialty certification, if they have, um, what type of it practice were, you know, were they in? Was it a general practice or like an AHA accredited practice? And then um, level of experience within the practice. And so um, what we've proposed is that if, if they score a minimum score of, um, it's three, but it's kind of an arbitrary score really, that you know, they can be considered for acceptance into this master's program from associate's degree. Um, otherwise for a bachelor, for someone with a bachelor's degree, then um, as long as they meet the prerequisites, um, we would like their cumulative GPA to be at least a 2.5 from their bachelor's degree, um, then they you know, are eligible to apply. Awesome, excellent. All right, and this is the big question, a peek behind the curtain at what this pilot program's curricul curriculum is looking like. Yeah, so what we're trying to design is something that anyone can do as far as not having to be physically in Harrogate, Tennessee. So it will be a fully online program. Um, it'll be 30 total credits that right now are, are spread across three semesters, but we have it such that you wouldn't have to do, you know, 10 credits per semester. If you wanted to do it part time, for example, you could do, you know, five credits here, five credits there. There are prerequisite courses for some of the courses to move on. Um, so you'd have to complete you know, the earlier courses at some point before you move on, um, but you can take your time. It is a pay by credit program. And as Mark said, our target um, tuition for the entire program is $25,000. Um, as far as what courses there will be, um, so it's kind of like, um, similar to the DVM program in that you start with foundational courses like anatomy and physiology, uh, and then you move into more clinically based courses. They're mostly gonna be didactic courses, so lecture based, so really expanding on the knowledge um, aspect. There are some uh, skills courses, but those would be handled similar to the online technician programs where um, someone would video themselves doing the skill in practice you know, under the supervision of a veterinarian. Um, 
and they would be skills that would need to be legal, you know, under whichever um, practice act the, the technician was was practicing. Um, and then the other big thing that we did is we're, we made tracks within the program. So um, there's a small animal track, a large animal track, a management track, a lab animal track, and we're developing a shelter medicine track. And so there will be 14 core credits that everyone has to take, and those include um, things like introduction to veterinary practice, a physiology course, um, a professional skills course, a surgical principles course, um, uh, some other advanced like care coordination course, a pharmacology course, uh, and a veterinary um, case management course. And then the rest of the, the program is basically, you know, kind of choose your own adventure and pick what works for you. And we probably will develop a certification program within that. So, you know, if you take these X courses in small animal, um, you will be certified as a small animal within that, that um, master's program. Um, some of the courses like pharmacology and um, our small animal dentistry course and introduction to practice management are actually taken with uh, the veterinary students. So it's, they'll, they'll um, have access to those courses through the veterinary program. Some of the courses are also cross-listed with a current master's program that we have. So our physiology course is cross-listed with a master's of veterinary biomedical sciences that we, we currently have. Um, so that's kind of what the curriculum looks like. And, um, you know, the biggest thing is we wanted to make it as flexible as possible for everyone. Yeah, and I get that because a lot of us are already working, right? Right. <laughs> and then to be able to do it at home or in your own time is, is yeah. excellent. Um, I think where there's some where there's some clarification needed based off of the Q&A is how do these courses really differentiate between becoming um, a practice manager? So that practice manager track, so that bachelor's track, um, how does that level up there? So the design of these courses, um, you know, the practice management track will probably be similar to that, but we have, um, you know, the, the small animal and large animal track and lab animal that will be really kind of using a lot of the same material that the veterinary students use just at a maybe a, a more superficial level or, um, you know, focusing on more general concepts and more common things, um, common diseases and disorders. So that, you know, basically this person's gonna come out of this program with a lot more, a lot better understanding of the physiology, pathophysiology of some of the diseases that they're seeing already in practice, but kind of more of the what's going on and then that can lead towards um, eventually, you know, if, if they wanna get into, you know, if, if ever the, the profession moves to a mid-level provider and extender, then it um, gives the back, background for things like diagnosis and treatment. Not that we expect people to do that coming out of this, but it would give you the, the foundation for that. How's that for timing, Catherine? Well, I am like <laughs> dying over here. Okay, so we are sending you back to the tables for a very short amount of time because what we are gonna do is we wanna put as much time on to the Q&A as possible. But now that you've heard the curriculum, what are your additional questions? Do you think this is something that you feel that would be beneficial for the profession overall? Again, hard questions, bring them on. We want them. This is the opportunity. Now, 